us pray. Most Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we want to thank you for another glorious week and the week that we are looking forward to, Father. Father, we know you got your hands all on everything, even that president of ours, Father. So we know we in good hands. But we just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this humble spirit to know that you could still are in charge and you still rule, rule over everything. Father, we want you to pray and stand up in the manservant who will be preaching the word today. Give her clarity as she proclaim the gospel. Father, in your name we pray. Amen. What an amazing God we serve. What an amazing moment this is. What amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So amazing. So amazing. So amazing. What an amazing God we serve. And so I think you need to give God an amazing praise. Wherever you are, whether you're in your living room or your bedroom, whether you're in your den, can you give God an amazing praise? Make whatever the place you are in this morning, make it a sanctuary. Come on and put some praise on it. Make it a sanctuary unto our amazing God. If you have to just walk around in a circle in your living room, make it a sanctuary for your amazing God. Whether you're in your bedroom, walk around, make it a sanctuary to your amazing God. That you're so amazing. And we give you glory. And we give you honor and we give you praise. For surely you are our God. You're our keeper. You're our refuge and our strength. You are our protector. And we thank you for life, for health, and for strength in this hour. Thank you, dear God, that you are the God who sits high and looks low. You are the omnipresent, omniscient God. You, God, alone are worthy of the praise. You're almighty. And we thank you this morning for the privilege to praise you, the privilege to pray, the privilege to give you honor. For your name is above every name. And we thank you for it right now. We thank you for this time to share your word with so many who are looking for hope and help. God, we know that you have a word to give to your people. And I pray that I may decrease and you may increase so that you may send your word out. And it shall not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what you sent it out to do. We give you praise in advance for lifting us, for delivering us, for saving us. And it is in the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone who believed that prayer say amen. God bless you. God bless you. It is my honor and privilege to stand here this morning and pinch it for the mighty man of God, Reverend Dr. Wesley McLaughlin, under the doctor's recommendation, uh, he is taking a round of medication that he needs to finish before he comes back out. And so I thank God that he is joining us uh, virtually as many of you are. And so we give God praise for his life and ask that you continue to keep him in your prayers. Amen. He is a miracle of God. Trust me. He is a miracle and we give God praise for the continued miracle that God is working in his life. We thank you for joining us this morning, whether you're here in body or you've joined us virtually, joining us through one of our uh, website uh, addresses or through Facebook Live. 
whatever way you are joining us this morning, we are making it a grand sanctuary. And what a wonderful thing to celebrate that church is not about the four walls, but it is about every place where you speak the name of Jesus, where you permeate the atmosphere with gratitude and your praises of God. So we thank God for making the whole earth a sanctuary this morning. And wherever you are, your praise is valid. And we thank you in advance for all that you're doing to lift up one another and to stay safe. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Thank God for this wonderful music ministry that is ushered in the praises of God. Thank God for our media ministry, our ushers, and those essential persons who have gathered here with us today. It is a privilege to be in God's house so that we may bring this experience to you uh, live on those vehicles which we thought were just nice to have. And now in this season that we live in, they are critical. So thank God for technology, my God. Thank God for technology and that we are able to use it for the glory and the honor of God so that we may stay connected. And those of us who are being socially distant, thank God that we are still connected. And there has to be more than an order of social distancing to keep the church apart. Uh, I've said this and I'll say it again, that the enemy will do anything to shut down the church. Uh, he will do any, he will take any means necessary. He'll shut the whole earth down to get to the church. But thank God that the church is not a building, but it is a living, breathing organism ordained by God. And we're the church wherever we are, wherever we go. It takes more than social distancing to disconnect the church. And so wherever you are, you can put a hallelujah in the atmosphere. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. I want to share a word with you this morning that's found in the second epistle of Peter. The second epistle of Peter, chapter 1 and the first eight verses of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. And they read, Simon Peter, a servant, and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ 
That's the word of God, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. And the Lord has laid upon my heart to share this word with you this morning from wherever you are watching. Access granted. Access granted. I want to share this with you that Peter, in this letter, begins his teaching in this passage by reminding them and us about the basics of an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. If we continue to live by the divine power of God that he's given to us, and if we continue to grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, we will be fruitful. So we're challenged in this passage to take full advantage of the divine power and promises of God. Peter then gives a specific strategy so that we can live victoriously through Jesus Christ. If we practice these characteristics of the divine nature, not only do we grow in being Christ-like, but we will also experience the rewards of an abundant life. So the relevant question that is being drawn from this text is what are we being given access to? Well, verse 3 pinpoints that Christ has provided everything that we need for life and godliness. That's good news today. Uh, While we waste time pleading with God for the means to make it day after day after day, the word of God is telling us he's already equipped us. Uh, Not the grocery store, not the hardware store, not the gas station or anywhere else where we're counting on access to. God is saying that beyond the places that you're counting on having access, I have greater provision in store for you. We're experiencing difficult times, and that seems to be the conversation that we're having 24-7, whether we're in our homes or we're gathered with our families or whether we're in the workforce or wherever we are, we're talking about the issue that is going on in the whole world. But I thank God for even the prophet uh, Isaiah when he says in chapter 60 and verse 1, and I've been quoting it often since uh, January, since this new year came in, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness covers the earth, and gross darkness covers the nation. But the Lord shall rise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. And so we're living in a time where darkness is indeed covering the earth. Uh, It's not just about East Coast, West Coast, Virginia, North Carolina, California, New York. It's not about a specific locality, but darkness has covered the earth and gross darkness. That's a double right there. Gross darkness is covering the nations, but God said, I will not be countermanded. My my glory shall be seen on you. So I thank God that he's already put something on us that will help us to navigate as we try to find access to what we need. Uh, Thank God for access. Thank God for access. So God said, I have provision that is greater than all of the things that you're trying to get to. Uh, Some of us have experienced long lines in the grocery stores and long lines in the gas stations. And with all the efforts to be socially distant from one another, it doesn't seem to apply when you go to certain stores. It doesn't seem to be important when you're going about trying to meet your needs and get what you need. It seems that that whole term is out of the window. But I thank God that we have to count on provision that's greater than social distancing. 
And so it's good to know that the word of God said that everything that we need to make it has already been given. It's already been released from glory. That's good news to me uh, this morning. So somebody just put it in the atmosphere, access granted. Uh, but before we can be granted access to what God has for us, you have to realize that you need what God has. Uh, you have to realize that you are lacking the strength to live and to operate like Jesus Christ. Uh, what do you need access to? I want to suggest four avenues of access that's lifted from this text. Uh, first of all, the text suggests that you need his divine power. Uh -huh. Verse 3 said, according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So Peter contends we've already been given his divine power. And through that power, he has made everything available to us. We have all the resources that we need necessary to make spiritual growth possible and not only godliness but life and godliness so power in that passage is translated from the greek word dunamis where we get the word dynamite meaning miraculous power force ability abundance and strength so according to his divine dunamis uh, he has given us force and ability and abundance and so this is one of the apostle Peter's favorite words throughout his letters uh, because even in first Peter he talks about Jesus being gone into heaven at the right hand of God with his angels and authorities and powers or dunamis being made subject to him somebody shout I've got power Ah, so see if you know that you have the power of God operating on the inside of you then there are some things that would not dare touch you there are some things that cannot latch on to you uh, some things some people some situations cannot handle the power of God that's on the inside of you what's on you uh, will blow it up, will dismantle it, uh, will cause it to be null and void and ineffective because of the abundance and the strength of God that's working in your life. And so when depression comes, you can blow it up. Uh, when discouragement comes, blow it up. Uh, when defeat comes, blow it up. Uh, when disease comes, blow it up. When doubt comes, blow it up. When abuse comes, blow it up. When grief comes, blow Blow it up. Uh, when financial love comes, financial lack comes, blow it up. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Because the power of God is at work in my life. Somebody shout, I got power. Ah, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I feel the power of God in my life. As we navigate through whatever situation we are going through, we can count on his divine power. Ah, you're going to need power in this season. You're going to need to know that you know, that you know that the power of God can handle whatever's going on around me, whatever dares to sneak up on me, whatever does whatever dares to rip me apart and tear me asunder and attack my mind and attack my family ah oh, you better come better than that because the divine power of God is working in my life hallelujah 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 see you got to get connected to power it doesn't just happen in your life. When you ask God to give you power, you asking for something. Because God says, listen, if you put dynamite in the hands of a child, something is, something is bound to happen that's not good. So you have to be at a place where you can handle power. Mm. Ah, So a good prayer life will connect you to power. Then God can trust you with power. A good worship life can connect you to power. You got to have a song that's down on the inside of you that no matter what key is struck up on the organ or the keyboard, I got a song 
strong down on the inside that keeps me connected to the power of God. I've got something ringing on the inside that no matter what I do, I just can't shut it off. I just can't turn it off. That even when you wake up in the middle of the night, you feel something churning down on the inside. Somebody shout, I've got power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so when you get plugged in to the power of God, the Lord is saying through his word today, access granted. Secondly, his divine promises grant us access. In verse 4, it says, For by these he has granted to us his precious, or from the Greek word, is translated highly valued and costly. His magnificent promises, or in the New English translation, great promises. So that by them you may become partakers or partners of my nature. Because now you have escaped the corruption that's in the world by lust. He said, I've got something big for you. I've got something great for you. I've got something precious and it's very costly. Uh, it means something to me. It's very valuable. And so since I'm a precious God, therefore my promises are precious. I'm a magnificent God, therefore my promises are magnificent. I'm about to do something that's so great. It's beyond your calculation. I'm doing something so so big in you that's beyond what anybody can imagine it's beyond your imagination beyond your calculation beyond every enemy's aggravation and certainly even beyond your speculation I dare somebody to shout God's doing something big his promises are great they are big they are costly they are precious he said I have given you great and magnificent promises that's not a little dab but do you that means what I promise I'm well able to perform it I'm about to use the dunamis power the power that's on you to dismantle to blow up to go kaboom to every force that against you because I made some promises to you because I've given you access to my promises he's promised forgiveness of sin he's promised rest for the weary he's promised comfort for the grieving he's promised hope for the dying. He's promised resurrected life uh, for all of us and heaven for eternity. And he's promised to be a prayer answering God. My God, my God. Uh, I, I believe that we are depending on the promises of God. It's more now than ever before. More now than ever before, we are looking to God for help. More now than ever before, people are finally realizing that they can't make it by themselves. People are finally realizing that it's not about what I have in the bank. They are finally realizing it's not about how many degrees I have. It's not about my status in the community. It's not about how many organizations I'm a member of. But I need God to fulfill his promises in my life I heard that he made some promises they're precious promises they're great promises they're magnificent promises and I need an almighty God to keep his promises toward me somebody shout access granted access granted access granted and so by his promises we partner in his nature he said, because I made promises to you, uh, I'm going to share the benefits with you. Uh, I'm glad that he said, I'm a partner with that. Because the word of God tells us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, 
all things are become new. And so he makes an exchange with us. If any man be in Christ, that's living, that's submitting, that's surrendering. I'm in Christ. It's not just a one-time thing, but it is a continual lifestyle to be in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And when the old goes out, the new comes in. Behold, all things have become brand new. Thank God for his promises. He promised to keep us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. And if there was ever a time when we need the peace of God to keep our minds, it is right now. We have to get up with peace on our minds. We have to lay down with peace on our minds. As we face the challenges of 2020, we need our minds to be kept in perfect peace. You promise that if I keep my mind on you, you will keep me in perfect peace. Somebody touch your mind and say, keep my mind, keep my mind, keep my mind. So thirdly, his access is given us divine progress. Right here in the text, verses 5 through 7, now that believers have access to the divine power of God, and now that you have access to the promises of God, now Peter urges us to make some progress. I'm glad God doesn't leave us in the same place, but he wants progress to be made in our lives. I've given you access to progress the basics of our faith should be more visible as we grow in God mm -hmm. and the graces that are listed in verses 5 through 7 are to be applied to our lives with all diligence or all zeal that means you have to put some effort in your growth and maturity see growth does not come without effort Mm -hmm. Because although God has provided all that we need for life and godliness, you have to give all diligence to the effort. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen if you don't get involved. You're not going to grow. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen if you stay away in emotional isolation. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen if you substitute the activities that will enhance your growth with what you want to do. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen if you sit around complaining, if you sit around having a pity party, if you try to play the blame game and everybody's responsible for where you are in life and everybody's responsible for my behavior and everybody is responsible for why I'm not in church and everybody's responsible for why I don't give and everybody's responsible for why I don't serve. If you sit around and play the blame game, you will never grow. But he said you've got to give all diligence. Effort has to come from you. So it takes your faith in God to establish you, but then he says you've got to make some progress on your faith ah and we know that without faith it's impossible to please him for when we come to God we must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him mm -hmm. so every other progress I make on this journey must be built on faith I've got to have faith as my starting block. I have to have faith knowing who I'm anchored in. I have to have faith so that I know whose side I'm on. But there is a process to my progress. Mm -hmm. For we walk by faith, not by sight. There is a process to my progress. And so as we walk this out, the Bible says, add to your faith. So you can't just be people of faith. You've got to add to your faith. And so he says, add to your faith virtue. Mm -hmm. And virtue is moral excellence.
excellence. So now not only am I a person of faith, but I must add virtue to my faith. Uh huh. So add to your faith virtue and then add to your virtue knowledge. I can't just be a person who has moral excellence, but I need something in my head. I need something in my heart. I need to know what I'm talking about. I need to know what the word of God says for myself. I need to know why I behave this way. I need to know the strategy that God has in place for my life. I need to know the plan of God and the purpose of God and the destiny of God into my life. And so I have to add to my faith virtue and add to my virtue knowledge and then add to my knowledge uh, of temperance or self-control. And so these first few steps of growth and progress deal with ourselves. Add to my faith virtue. Add to my virtue knowledge. Add to my knowledge self-control. And once I've gotten that down pat, then he gives me other graces to help me to deal with the world around me. Because he then says, add to your temperance or self-control patience. Mm -hmm. So then now I can tolerate somebody else. <laughs> if I got myself under control, now I can tolerate somebody else. <laughs> so he said, I've got to add to my self-control patience or perseverance and then add to my patience godliness and add to my godliness kindness because I don't care how much faith you have how much virtue how much knowledge how much self-control and patience if you just a mean person <laughs> if you just mean something is wrong with your whole progress scale Something is off. <laughs> Something is off. If you just mean, you just mean, you, you, you just mean, you got to get it together. There's a process in your progress. So then he says, add kindness and add to your kindness charity, which is unselfish love. And so there's something we have to put in the atmosphere that God has given me access to make progress. So I can't just sit at home and say I'm a person of faith, but some movement ought to be happening in my life. There should be some visible signs of growth in my life. There should be a sign that my roots are planted deep in the word of God. There should be a sign that there's some love and kindness and self-control and patience in my life. As we grow and mature, he's given us access to make progress. Somebody shout access. He's got access to make, make progress. And so I'm glad that God does not want us in the same place throughout our walk. But he keeps saying, come here. Come a little further. Okay, God, I got faith. Come a little further. Okay, God, I got virtue. Come a little further. Okay, God, I got knowledge. Come a little further. Okay, God, I've got temperance. Come a little further. Okay, God, I got patience. Come a little further. Okay, God. God, I've got godliness. Come a little further. Okay, God, I've got kindness. Come a little further. Okay, God, I've got love in my heart. I'm making progress because access has been granted. Hallelujah. So you need to walk around your living room and say access granted. Walk around your bedroom and say access granted. Walk around your den. Walk around the place where you are. I don't care where you are today. Some growth ought to be happening in your life. Some progress ought to be happening. Because he said the business might be closed. But I I've granted you access to something better. The gas station might be locked down, but I've granted you access to something better. You may think it's bad, but you're coming out of this with greater access. I'm so excited about what God is doing because he's given us access to everything that I need for life and godliness 
God will not let you live uh, without having what you need. Uh, somebody shout access. Access granted. Access granted. Access granted. Access granted. Access granted. Access granted. Put it in the atmosphere. Access granted. And lastly, I love what he says. After he tells us how to make progress, he said, if these things be in you, and if they abound, if these graces are found in you and they're making progress, you will not be barren. You will not be unfruitful, but you'll be the proof. You'll be the evidence of the Almighty. You will be evidence that God gives us access because when you look back over your life and see where the Lord has brought you from you said God I didn't know then what I know right now because you gave me access I'm in a better place look at look back over my life when I thought the enemy was gonna take me out but God raised me up put me back gave me power gave me promise told me you got access you got the access you need to use it walk through a doorway say i got access walk around the house i got access whatever i need he has given me access 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 you shall be fruitful Give the Lord a praise. Right there. He said, I've given you access to power. Touch yourself, say, I got access to power. Not only power, but great promises. Say, I got great promises. God is ready to do something big. God is ready to do something great. And I know behind every headline, Fox News and MSNBC and CNN has, God said, breaking news. The Bible is still right. Breaking news. You shall be fruitful. Breaking news. You'll have everything you need. Breaking news. I'm your refuge and strength. Breaking news. I'm going to take care of you. Breaking news. I got your family's back. Breaking news. I still heal all diseases. Breaking news. I'll provide all of your needs. Somebody put your hands together and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for access. Power, promise, progress, and productivity. He's given us access. Don't worry about what's closing. Start praising him in advance for what's opening. Ah. We're going to be more grateful than ever before for the access that God is setting us up for. He's setting us up for the bounce back of the ages. What we're going through is unprecedented. But God said, I will not let the enemy's headlines I'll do what I'm getting ready to do. And I'm excited as I walk around with my head up saying, God, your word says, I have access to everything that I need. And so keep your peace. Keep your peace in this season. When people keep trying to punch at you and try to get you nervous and scared and they run headline after headline after you trying to shatter you and shake you tell them I'm unshakable I'm unshakable 
My flesh might cry, but my spirit is strong. My head may bow, but the power of God that's on the inside of me refuses to be shaken. And I maintain my peace and I maintain my praise. Don't let it take away your peace. Don't let it take away your praise. So wherever you are, put your hands together and bless God for access. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're in your homes right now and your family is with you, grab them by the hand. It's your family. If you're out and about, you don't have to touch physically to connect with another believer. But together, we cry as the righteous cry in Psalms 34 and 17. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all of their troubles. Get your cry on. Get your sound back. Because he said, if you cry, I will hear you. So we will not be defeated in this hour. We will not be fearful in this hour. We walk around with our heads up, secure in the word of God. This is our map, this is our strategy. This is the book, the contract that God made with the righteous. And when I cry, the Lord, hears me and delivers me out of all of my troubles so we're going to pray lifting your hands everywhere father these are your children and we've come to cry out to you oh god hear our cry oh god hear our supplication oh god the righteous cry and you hear us and you promise to deliver us you promised us access to the throne of god and wherever we are becomes an altar giving us access to the power of God to the promises of God to the progress and the productivity you said we will not be barren we shall not be unfruitful but we will produce according to your word and we thank you now for everyone who is even lost and looking for you we have the means to record those if you're watching by Facebook live type in I want to receive Christ and we will get in touch with you and make sure that we put access to the progress of God in your life if you have a prayer request let us know through our website or through Facebook inbox us because we want to show you the way of access to the promises of God. Thank you, Lord, in advance for every soul that you're bringing into the kingdom in this season. Jesus loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And right now, we release the promises that have already been given to us from heaven. Receive him, receive him, receive him, receive him, receive him, receive him right now. Thank you for your power going out all over the world. Thank you for your power going into every household. Thank you for your power going into every nook, every cranny, every vehicle every back room in the name of Jesus we speak to the crack house we speak to the poor house we speak to the high house we speak to the white house let the power of God that's given us access thank you Jesus for releasing it hallelujah we shall not be defeated we shall not thank you for releasing 
You're healing now. You're healing now. You're healing now. Touch everybody. Every sickness. Every disease. Every ailment. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for access. Thank you for access. Access to your healing. Access to your power. Access to your promises. Access. Be raised in the name of Jesus. Ankle bones find strength. Every pain is dissipated. In the name of Jesus Christ. We shall not be defeated. We shall not. Never. 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 We thank you. Hallelujah. We shall never. Never. Be defeated. Hallelujah. Thank you for your power. That's filling up the living room. Thank you. That I see in the spirit children crying. I see children weeping. I see children weeping. Running to their parents. Saying what's happening to me. Tell them it's the power of God. Tell your children it's the power of God. I see fathers. Whose eyes are filled with tears. Shaking their heads. Saying God I'm sorry. I'm sorry God. Draw me closer. Draw me closer to you. Draw me closer to you. You have access. You have access. You have access. The power of God is on you now. The power of God is in your vehicle now. Those who are in your vehicles now. You may have to pull over to the side of the road. Because the power of God has been released into your car. And you shall never be defeated. You've been granted access. You've been granted access. And we continue to give God praise. Because through his divine power. He has granted us access. To all things. Give God a praise. Give him honor. Give him the fruit of your lips. And tell him thank you. That in this season. Where many doors are closing. You have granted us access. It is in the name of Jesus we ask and believe these things. Amen. God bless you, people of God. I pray that this word lifted and encouraged you, that you will receive it, you will apply it, and better yet, go and read it for yourselves. Make it a part of your devotional time to review what you've heard today virtually through your virtual church and sanctuary. Not just on our site, but so many are streaming today. So many people are looking for hope. Tell them I found out that God has granted me access to all things. I pray that every need will be met. Every door that needs to be opened shall be opened. You will continue to make progress in your spiritual walk with God. God bless you.